Hi guys, Martin here, also known as UK Guy in USA in the International Scale Modelers Forum. Um, this is uh, the introduction to my final reveal for the Airfix Douglas C47 Sky Train. So I just want to say a quick few words before I uh, uh, pass you on to the build reveal video. Um, as a kit, I'd, I'd recommend it, it's a good kit, it's a nice build, nice new tool in. Everything except a couple of features fit together well um, and if you've been following my build videos you'll see those couple of areas that were a bit, um, bit dodgy. So because of those areas, you know, unless you're, you're aware, you know, you have some fitting skills and uh, some patience uh, and you're not a young modeler that's coming straight into this and thinking that things are supposed to just glue together and if it sticks out that's the way it should be then uh, it's not the kit for you but um, those two areas were the wing roots um, where the wings join the fuselage there's a fillet piece on each side and you have to fit that fillet piece. Well, when you locate them, they stamp out of the fuselage surface. So I uh, carefully filed the back edges, gradually, bit by bit, kept dry fitting until eventually I got it to sit flush. Once it sat flush, it was good. It didn't need any filler. And that was the same for both sides. Um, and then the second port part was... Um, this section here at the side of the engines where the wings join together the upper and lower lower um, wing sections as you're assembling the lower onto the upper wing inside there's that spur uh, that spaces the wings and also acts as a brace when you assemble the upper set wing assembler or well, when you put the wings together there there's a gap and it's quite a substantial gap on both sides so what I did was uh, filed the top surface of the inner braces those wing spars down and kept kept doing it there's also a little tab that sticks out from from inside the uh, side of the engine nacelle and inside the lower wing there's a recess that sits on that that also holds it off so I using my scalpel blade I scraped that recess to make it deeper as well um, but a bit of patience it all fitted and closed up nicely and that was it everything else is great windows fit nicely they drop in place beautifully uh, so no no fitting for anything else so yeah I'd recommend it it's a nice kit goes together nicely apart from those two things and it looks good um, the only other contention is when I came to when I'd finished painting it, um, I started looking at decals, and uh, I looked at the side decal, the star and bar on top of the D-Day stripes, and I thought, I just thought to myself, why is it hanging off the D-Day stripes? It'd look better if it was more central or within those stripes and uh, it just looked odd visually it looked odd so then I started looking for images of this craft J8i Kilroy is here and I found images of the aircraft and I discovered that the first stripe which the white stripe is shown on the, the paint painting guide starting on the first door it covers the first door well, in actual reality, when you look at images of the actual aircraft and images of a lot of these C-47s from the wartime, the stripe starts on the second door, and that first door where the uh, paratroopers jump out is completely clear of D-Day stripes and is it's all olive green. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's a mistake by Airfix. Pissed me off, but I couldn't do anything about it. I'd gone too far, and I wasn't going to attempt to correct it. I was concerned about making a mess of what I'd already done. 
So I just continued and uh, completed it. So the last time you saw this aircraft guys, it was all painted, the stripes were in place and uh, I had to put a clear coat on it to start decaling, which I did. Then I clear coated again, did some weathering and, uh, and then I assembled the wheels, the propellers. I gave it a couple of coats of flat clear coat and then when that was dry, I took all the masking off the canopies and the windows and stuck all the fiddly little aerial and antenna bits on. And then I put, a, um, I put an antenna wire on from the tail down to the uh, dorsal aerial. Um, and I used black thread for that. Um, so that's it. I'm good to go. And I just want to say sorry guys for the last few days I've been out of it, I've been in hospital and so I haven't been able to comment on the International Scale Modelers Forum and I haven't been able to make comments on anybody's uh, um, YouTube videos but I'm back home for a few days, I have to go back, I've got to go to the gastrointestinal unit because uh, it, you know, it could be something gastrointestinal that's causing the chest pain and the back pain. Um, something like a high hernia or a uh, gallbladder issue but well, we'll find out um, I'll let you know I'll keep you up posted with updates when I get to know from the hospital resorts anyway without further ado let's stop waffling it's coming up to seven minutes of waffle let's get on with the video and let's reveal this finished C47 for you this is the first part of my three part build series in commemoration of my father-in-law who, who was um, dropped into Normandy by C-47 on D-Day June 6th 1944. Alright thanks guys and I'll see you soon. <laughs> Thank you.